Welcome to the Story A Day podcast. This is Julie Duffy, encouraging you to be a writer today, not someday. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Julie here from the Story A Day podcast. And I thought this week, after an intense month of writing during Story A Day September, and before a potentially intense month of writing, if you're doing NaNoWriMo, let's take a breath. Let's remember why we're doing this. Let's talk about reading. Most of us are writers because we started loving the books that we read and the stories that we read when we were young. Something in us said, I can do that, or I want to make people feel that way. So my question to you is, are you still enjoying reading? And if you're interested in writing short stories, are you reading short stories? I'm not here to nag you. I'm not here to make you feel guilty about anything. But I just think that if you are going to read short stories, it's kind of imperative that you read them. You can watch movies and you can read novels. And all of that stuff has storytelling and imagery and uh, all the the things things about storytelling that we need to learn but they do it in different ways. Like I feel there's a reason why it's relatively rare to have somebody who writes a novel also write screenplay and certainly also write screenplay alone. It happens, but screenplay writing is a very particular skill. And if you talk to people who go one way or the other, they have challenges. People who go from writing novels to writing screenplays have to learn that it's all action, it's all dialogue. There's no room for internal monologuing. There's no room for descriptions of the colour of the sky. That stuff you have to leave to the director and the cinematographer and the costume people. And there's a, it's a team effort, right? So when you go the other way from screenwriting to fiction, novel, narrative fiction writing, You have to learn to put all of that internal stuff in. You can't rely on the images to set the scene for you. So there's there's just different skills in everything. And there are certainly different skills in short story writing than there are from novel writing. Some of them carry over. And if you want to write a short little story, um, some of the skills that you learn writing novels certainly apply characterization, dialogue, setting, pacing, things like that. But some things really don't apply. You probably won't have multiple characters. You'll have a couple, but you won't have an ensemble in a short story. It's unlikely unless it's a longer short story. How do you maintain the interest for your reader when you've only got one protagonist? I mean, one really one character how do you escalate tension? How do you create conflict for that character? It's it's a different beast in a short story. And I would argue that short stories don't need to be narrative. There are some fantastic short stories out there. One of the things I love is when a short story is kind of weird. It doesn't do the things that you expect from a novel. It doesn't have rising action and a climax and everything tied up neatly in a bow at the end. It gets in and it gets out and it does something weird and it makes you think or it makes you see the world in a different way. Maybe it's you only hear one side of the story. Maybe it's told entirely in dialogue. Maybe it is um, told backwards. Maybe it is just a list. So many weird things you can do with short fiction and the only way you're going to know or have a clue how to do any of those things is if you're reading short fiction. So I'm not going to leave you high and dry. I surveyed the Story A Day community and I put together a list of their stories. The remit I gave them was if you ruled the world and could dictate that people had to read a short story, what would it be? And I let them suggest more than one because after all they rule the world. Um, And so I got an interesting selection of short stories. A lot of them were classic short stories that if you open up any 
anthology published before blah, 1990. You will see these stories in there. There's um, Flannery O'Connor's a, um, a Good Man is Hard to Find. There's Shirley Jackson's The Lottery. There is There Will Come Soft Rains by Ray Bradbury. Hills Like White Elephants by Ernest Hemingway. Uh, the Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins uh, Gilman. The Garden Party by Catherine Mansfield. Um, things probably that your English teachers made you read and that you may or may not have enjoyed when you were a teenager or maybe when you were at college. All of those were certainly ones that came up and there's a reason because they are well crafted and they were written in an era when the short story was really finding its its feet and really it was a, a big influence on the culture before television came along. So these stories, um, there's a list of them at Story A Day that you can find, which are undisputed classics. They've stood the test of time. They, they all have something to recommend them. And you should, as with any art form, ground yourself in the classics and understand where you're coming from so that you understand the next phase and the next phase and how to break the rules or use the rules or subvert the rules. But I also put together a list of more contemporary stories. These are a little more uh, random. There's so many short stories we could choose from. It's so easy to find them now that whittling this list down to twelve to ten was somewhat of a random process. The, the, cat, the criteria I used for this modern stories list was that somebody had to say, I read this and it really stuck with me. And in most cases, if that was something that they said it was because it stuck with them for years or they recommended it to everyone they knew. So there's a bunch of, um, of stories on there by some people you would have heard of, like probably heard of Jim Shepard and Karen Russell. Um, you probably have heard of Neil Gaiman and maybe Terry Bisson and Tobias Wolfe. You may not have heard of some newer writers like Primi Muhammad, Annalee Newitz, uh, you might not have heard of Car uh, Carl Folk or Rachel Engelman or Mary Overton, but all of these people were writing contemporary stories that touched people in the Story A Day community. So, what do we learn about this? Well, we should be reading short stories, of course, to study them because we want to write them and that's all very fine and dandy, but I think we also need to not forget that we should be reading them for enjoyment. If you don't enjoy short stories, A, either you're reading them because you feel you ought to and you're reading the ones that everyone's told you to read and you don't enjoy them because they're just not the kind of thing that you like to read. It might not be that you don't enjoy short stories, you just might not have found the right short stories. So the question becomes why should you read short stories at all? And if it's simply because somebody has told you you should read short stories, stories because you should write short stories because you have to write short stories to get agents interested before they'll be interested in your novels. That, my friends, is simply not true. It's no longer true. It's incredibly hard to get short stories published these days. This isn't the 1950s. It's very hard to get short stories published these days. And sure, there are some agents and maybe in the, the very, in the one narrow sliver of the market that is literary fiction, this may still be true. And it might help you in science fiction and fantasy, which have a robust short story publishing um, sector. It may help you to prove to an agent that you are serious about publishing, but it may not. If you're not a natural short story writer, if you dislike constraining yourself to that form, A, I'm really pleased that you're here because I talk about short stories a lot and obviously you're getting something out of it, but B, and more importantly, you don't have to write short stories. It's simply not true that you have to write short stories before you can write novels. Some of you are natural novelists and you would be much better served spending your time writing five more novels and learning that process. And if you dip in and find the occasional short story that you enjoy, great, good for you. And if you get if you get the notion to write a short story or two, great, good for you. But you don't have to. If you're reading, if you're if you want to write short stories, it's either because it's something you really want to do because you are aware that writing short stories is more manageable 
in terms of learning story structure and learning characterization and stuff like that, you are using it as a tool to get you to the longer works, that's fine. But don't think you have to do it that way. If it works for you, great. In which case, read some short stories, read some narrative short stories, those old, older ones, the classic ones, some more modern ones that are not as uh, experimental. So just classic narrative structured short stories. Find the ones that you enjoy. If you are reading short stories at all, I would argue that you should be reading them in at least a three to one ratio of things I enjoy and things I feel like I ought to read. So I don't generally, there, there's a certain type of short story that I generally don't enjoy. And I laughed when I saw that everybody recommended, of course, um, A Good Man is Hard to Find by Flannery O'Connor, uh, because I've been hearing that recommendation forever. And when I eventually read it, I didn't like it at all. I didn't, <laughs> I just didn't like it. And I know I need to go back and read it and see, you know, read it more analytically and see why everyone recommends it. But reading it as a reader, I kind of hated it. So there's another point. If you are reading short stories, I would read them first as a reader and then and only then break them down, read them a second time and break them down and figure out how the author is doing what they're doing. If you really enjoyed it, figure out how they made you enjoy it. If you didn't enjoy it, but everyone else recommends it, break it down and see what is working really well in that story. Even if you didn't enjoy the subject matter or you didn't enjoy how it ended, there's something about that story that's working if everyone's recommending it. So hold your nose, be dispassionate and figure it out. And that can help you to write the kind of stories that you want to read, but with the skill and craft of someone who's clearly, I mean, Flannery O'Connor is clearly a master of the short story. Um, there's plenty of people whose stories I don't really enjoy subject matter wise, who are clearly skilled as practitioners of the form. Read a lot of short stories so that you can find out what it is that you do like about them. Do you like the humour? Do you like the ability to have a really unreliable narrator, which is something you can do in short stories because you're only spending this much time with them. You don't have to make that tricky dance work for 360 pages. So do you, you know, read lots of short stories to find out what kinds of stories you like? Do you like the ones with the twisty endings? Do you like the ones where you have to puzzle out what's going on? Do you like the ones that read more narratively, that have a story in them and well-rounded characters and have a neat ending? Do you like happy endings? Do you like ambiguous endings? You, have, you read them partly for your enjoyment, partly to figure out what you want to read and partly for inspiration. When you read a great story, you're like, I want to do that, right? I want, I want to do that. I want to give people this kind of pleasure. So read them once for pleasure, read them once to figure out how the author made it work or where it failed to work for you. There are so many, many short stories out there. So I have compiled a list for you this week. As I say, I, I, um, I surveyed the Story Day community, in particular the superstars who are really working hard at figuring out how to get better at this short story lark. So they gave me these, these suggestions. I threw in a few of my own. And if you come over to storyaday.org this week, I'll put a link in the uh, show notes, you'll find this list of 10 classic and 10 more modern stories. The advantage of reading the classics is, of course, they're classics, they've stood the test of time, you know that there's something in them that's working. The advantage of the modern ones is that they may be more enjoyable. In my case, I think often they are, but more than that, they're also closer to what is selling these days. So if you are interested in placing your stories somewhere. There's really no point in writing something like Faulkner's A Rose for Emily unless you're doing a pastiche or, or modernising it somehow because I just don't think that would appeal to modern readers buying a modern anthology or publication. It's, 
it's just different now, right? So you need to be reading contemporary stories as well to figure out what is selling. So come over to the site and check that out. There's also a couple of nice little sort of infographic versions of them, which you can download and print out with short links so you can find these stories. Um, share these widely. We want more people reading short stories, right? If you enjoyed the stories, particularly the ones by the modern authors, um, write to them, tell them you enjoyed it. And everybody loves to hear from fans. So, you know, if you liked reading Annalee knew it's a story about Robot and Crow. Why not find her on Twitter and send her a send her a compliment? And then I'd love it if you came over to the blog and told me what you're reading. Um, you can find this episode at storyaday.org episode 185. Uh, that's storyaday.org forward slash episode 185. And um, just leave a comment there. Tell me the, the one short story that you would make everyone read if you ruled the world and um, what you've read recently and what you learned from it or what you enjoyed about it. Love to hear from you. Always looking to get more short story recommendations. So please pop over and leave a comment. And in the meantime, of course, keep writing. Thanks for listening. Why not come over to the blog at storyaday.org and check out this week's writing prompts and articles. And in the meantime, have a great creative week. And of course, keep writing.